Welcome to another episode of PC Building Simulator. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Today, I'm going to show you how to overclock RAM. But before we do that, this workshop may or may not look familiar to you. If you own the eSports Expansion DLC for PC Building Simulator, if you don't know already, you actually have access to the three workshops that were available in that expansion. So this is the first one you start off in. Uh, this is the garage. And I think it's probably my favorite just because it looks like a garage. I mean, I probably wouldn't throw my PC on the floor in the garage like that one is, but you know, it is what it is. At least we've got workbenches for the rest of the PCs we have in here. If you didn't know, and now you can access all three of those workshops. So go check those out. It's definitely nice to have three more workshops to build in. All right, let's get started with the RAM overclocking here. There's a few reasons why you may want to overclock RAM. One is if you're going for maximum 3D Mark scores. So let's say you've got a PC that you've built, you've overclocked everything, and you've got a motherboard in there that accepts up to 5,000 megahertz RAM. Well, in the game currently, the RAM only goes up to 4,800 megahertz. So if you want to hit the full 5,000 megahertz, you're going to have to buy the 4,800 megahertz RAM or somewhere near that and overclock it to 5,000 megahertz. Or if you're just trying to push the system as far as you possibly can, it's always worth overclocking the RAM. You're going to get a little bit more in a 3D Mark score. Or if you're trying to build a budget system and you just want to get a little bit more out of the RAM. So you buy like the cheapest 2133 megahertz RAM and you aren't quite getting the 3D Mark score you were expecting to be able to give it back to the customer like in career mode or something. You might be able to overclock that RAM a little bit, get the 3D Mark score you were looking for and save yourself a little bit of money. All right, so this is the system we're gonna be working with. If you're curious about the specs, they are over here to the right. It's got a water-cooled CPU, and that's pretty much it. It's got a 3090. And we've got four sticks of G-Skill Trident Z RGB RAM, 8 gig, 3200 megahertz. So I'm going to go ahead and power this on. I'm going to hop into the BIOS because overclocking RAM is quite easy, and it's actually pretty quick. It doesn't take too long to do, especially in this game. So before you get started you want to go ahead and overclock your CPU. If you're going to overclock the CPU at all, overclock the CPU first, especially if you're going to be messing with the base clock. Because as soon as you touch the base clock, if you've overclocked your RAM, it's going to adjust your RAM overclock and may make it unstable or possibly could fry your RAM. However, it's, it's pretty hard to fry RAM just by overclocking. It's just going to make it not stable. Uh, where you could fry it would be in the voltage, and I definitely recommend if you look over here to the right where it says warning too much voltage can damage RAM, we recommend you don't go above 1.65 volts. Well, you totally can go above 1.65 volts. I've easily gone up to 1.75 volts many times without frying RAM. However, I do generally stick to around the 1.65 volt range. So XMP was on, so I just turned that off because we can't overclock with XMP. XMP is its own little built-in overclock. However, you do want to start off around the XMP speed because there's no point in testing speeds that are below XMP. So the XMP for this RAM kit is 3200 megahertz. So we're going to go up to 3200 megahertz and then we're going to go up to 3300 megahertz. So we're always going to start off one above what the XMP RAM speed is. That way you're not wasting your time. Then we're going to go straight to 1.65 volts because there's really no reason to start off any lower. You're not going to fry your RAM at 1.65 volts. So let's go to settings. Let's go ahead and apply those changes and restart. And then it's as simple as running OCCT. And you don't even need to do a full test. You can do the automatic. It takes about 10 seconds. If it doesn't, if it runs for 10 seconds and doesn't blue screen, 
then it's stable. If it blue screens within those first 10 seconds of running, then it is not stable and you need to go adjust the RAM. So we've been running for more than 10 seconds. It has not blue screened. So we're gonna go ahead and stop that. I'm just gonna push P to power this off and turn it back on. I'm gonna hop back into the BIOS and I'm gonna bump the RAM speed up by another click. So now we're at 3333 megahertz. So let's go back to settings, apply changes and restart. We're gonna go ahead and let this thing boot up. And again, we're gonna run OCCT. This is all you have to do to overclock your RAM. You just continue bumping it up, running OCCT for 10 seconds and seeing if it blue screens. So we're getting close to that 10 second mark. No blue screen, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop it. I'm just gonna push P to power it off and P to power it back on. I'm gonna hold delete and right back into the BIOS. I'm gonna bump the RAM up another notch. So we are at 3,400 megahertz now. Let's go ahead and apply and restart. All right, back into OCCT. Again, the test doesn't actually start until 25 seconds. So you need to let it run until about 15 seconds to get your full 10 seconds of runtime. There we go. So I'm gonna stop it. I'm gonna power it down, power it back on, and hop right back into the BIOS. This is probably one of the easiest things to overclock. It takes a little bit of time just because of the in and out of the BIOS. So we're gonna go up to 3466. And again, I'm going to apply changes and restart. But as you can see, it's quite easy. I'm gonna go ahead and fire this test back up. We'll wait for it to go through its monitoring stage. And now we're testing. So again, we're gonna wait until it gets down to about 15 seconds. And if it hasn't blue screened by then, we're gonna go ahead and power it back down. I'm not even gonna stop it this time. I'm just gonna power it off, power it back on and go right back into the BIOS. All right, so I'm gonna bump it up to 3600 megahertz. So this was a 3200 megahertz kit. Usually, not all of them, but generally speaking, I can easily get a 3200 megahertz kit up to 3600 megahertz. So let's go ahead and apply that and let it restart. Hopefully this kit won't make me a liar and it will be stable at 3600 megahertz. So we're gonna let this run for its 10 seconds. And again, you're not gonna see anything down here in the system information talking about any of the overclocks for RAM. For whatever reason, it just gives you CPU and GPU. So we are stable. I'm going to go ahead and power it off and back on and right back into the BIOS. Back to RAM OC, and then we're going to go to 3733, which may not be stable. But we're going to go ahead and apply and restart. Start up OCCT. And we will see what happens once it starts running. There we go, blue screen. Generally, the 3200 megahertz kits do not go past 36 in the game. Um, I haven't tried them all out, so there may be some that do, but generally speaking, or, you know, you may get a golden set of RAM uh, that does go over 36 if it's a 3200 kit, but it really depends on the kit. I mean, obviously, if you get a 2133 megahertz kit and you're going to try to go for 5000 megahertz, it's probably not going to happen. It's just probably not going to happen, but let's power this off. We're going to power it back on, hop into the BIOS, and I'm going to bump this back down from 3733 back down to 3600 megahertz because that's where it was stable. Now we could increase the RAM voltage and possibly get it up to that 3733, but I'm pretty happy where it is. I don't really want to push the RAM voltage any higher than 1.65, even though it can sometimes go higher. So I'm going to go ahead, go back and apply these changes and restart. And just to be safe, I'm gonna run OCCT one more time. 
just to make sure it wasn't a fluke. And I'm going to let it run through the whole test all the way till the end, all 30 seconds, or technically 25 because the first five seconds, it's not really testing yet. So I just want to make sure it is definitely stable. And if you really want to check stability, obviously you can turn on the infinite test type, which will max out your power draw and all that stuff as well. So we're back into the monitoring stage. Seems stable to me. So our RAM is now overclocked to 3600 megahertz without using XMP. It's not gonna show it anywhere except in the BIOS, but we know it is. So as I was talking about these workshops from the eSports expansion, uh, let me show you real quick before I end this episode, let me show you real quick how to actually access those because they're not in the exact same spot. So you, you push escape, you go to change workshop, and then there's an arrow over here to the right of all the other workshops. And that's where you can actually access the eSports expansion workshops. And you've got three of them. You've got the garage, you've got the one that's more like in an office building, and then you've got the really fancy one, but it's dark. It's a dark one, so you probably won't see me recording in this one just because it's hard to record. It's, it doesn't show up well. Any of these dark workshops, the Razor workshop, the Aorus, the EVGA workshop, none of them show up great on YouTube just because they're dark. But anyway, that's how you access them, and that was how you overclock RAM. Very simple. Go give it a try. If you enjoyed this episode or if it helped you out, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to get notified as soon as a video goes live. Also, if you want to help support me and the channel, there's a link to my Patreon down in the description. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Stay safe out there, guys. And I will see you in the next episode.